Welcome to Complexity Made Simple. My name is Paul Allen and the subject of today's newsletter is why you need standard deviation. Okay, now in manufacturing, standard deviation, to be honest in any company, if you look at standard deviation, when you take a look at this, what is it, the sum of um, all the individual data points minus the average all squared sitting over n minus 1 with the root. When anybody takes a look at that thing, they go, man, why do I want to know standard deviation? Well, if you want to, if you want to understand your process properly, if you want to understand what's about to happen to your process when you switch each machine on, this thing is simply brilliant at doing that. So let's have a look what's going to happen. Your processes are going to generate a distribution. Maybe the distribution looks like this. Maybe, maybe there's a 1% defect rate going to appear, perhaps in the tails. Now, of course, what you want to know, you want to know that that's going to happen. So you're going to take data out of your process and you're going to calculate basically two statistics in order to be able to understand that picture. You are going to calculate the signal, which typically is the mean, and you're going to calculate the noise, which is if you just take the data at face value, you might just calculate the range of your sample. So you've taken 30 to 50 data points. You've calculated the mean and you've calculated the range. And then what you've done, of course, is you've held it up to scrutiny against what you're trying to achieve. Hopefully, of course, the mean, choose a different color. Hopefully the mean is hitting the target and hopefully the range is inside the tolerance and of course if you've got those two things hey happy days what you've effectively got is a capable process and hopefully you're going to make a lot of money you're going to have zero defects but let's think about that for a second so they're, they're the statistics that we would like to use they're very easy to calculate so the range the max the max minus the min um, why don't we want to use the max, the max minus the min? Why do we want to use this thing? Well, let's think about the range. I've only taken 30 to 50. Inside the 30 to 50, do you really think I've captured all the extreme results? Maybe I might have picked more extreme results out here but do you think I'd be lucky enough if I've only got a 1% defect let's take this down smaller half a percent defect rate in the tails maybe only a tenth of a percent yeah 0.1 of a defect in the tails by the way it's still a defect rate and it's going to cost you money don't you want to know how much this process is going to cost you well of course you do but the trouble with the range the range won't see those extreme results so why are we going to use this? Well, this standard deviation, by the way, where does this is the total variability, by the way, the range? The standard deviation is just the average variability. I wish it was called the average variability because we would all understand it much better. Unfortunately, it's called standard deviation. So, why am I going to use this? Not the total variability. Well, the power of this thing up here. Standard deviation. What does it have the power to do? It has the power to predict. It has the power to predict extreme results. 
In fact, not just it has the power to predict extreme results. To be honest, it has the power to predict all results. So, for example, if that was what was going to happen, here's the process. It's going to look like this. Let's say the process, let's say the process is off center a little bit. Process is going to look like that. If you calculate the mean and the standard deviation of that data set from just 30 pieces, what it's going to do is it's going to predict the defect rate. It predicts the tail here. How much data is going to fall in the tail? Now, by the way, that would be the case even if your 30 samples were all defect free. So in other words, you've taken a sample out of the process. You've seen no defects. If you just look at the range, what would your assumption be? Your assumption is the process is going to be defect free. That is not true. With only 30 samples, you've just not been lucky enough to collect the extremes yet. However, if you calculate standard deviation, a great number to know, it will predict the defect rate. It will predict results you haven't seen yet. That is why we use standard deviation. It is the most brilliant number to know. It has the ability to predict tomorrow. It has the ability to predict defect rates even when you've seen zero in the sample. The range cannot do that. Standard deviation, use it, use it to your advantage. You can make shed loads of money if you use standard deviation to your example, to, to your process, uh, to your advantage. Standard deviation, it is a great number to know, learn to love it. If you'd like to know more about any of the concepts covered in this video or any of the other concepts covered in my, uh, my other tutorial videos, then here's my latest book, Drink Tea and Read the Paper. It covers everything you need to know about how to make sure that Six Sigma becomes world-class engineering in your company. Otherwise, if you'd like to get in touch with me, a little bit of help about Lean, a little bit of help with Six Sigma, please contact me on the email below.